Yes, thank you, Marion. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Bethan Perkins. I'm a product owner and developer on the Daphne platform. And Tom and I are going in this next session to give you an overview of the platform itself and show you some of the functionality there and the kinds of things that you can do. So I'll start sharing my screen. I hope everyone can see that OK. Uh, so to access the Daphne platform, you will need a login. Um, an anonymous attendee has asked how you can access the data on the platform and this will show you that. Uh, we don't have a registration button at the moment, so in order to uh, receive a login you will need to contact us. Contacting us is fairly straightforward, Google Daphne, find our public site and then at contact you can send us an email here and we'll discuss with you setting up a, a, an account on the site. So if we log in, then you will see we have uh, areas for data, models, workflows and management of assets. We're not going to touch on management of assets at the moment here, but suffice to say that Daphne is a community platform. And so we are encouraging, strongly encouraging people to get on board and add their own content. Um, and the management assets section is an area where people can um, see who has permissions to their uh, models or data on the platform. Tom is going to cover um, models and workflows uh, in a moment, whereas I'm going to look at the data section here. Um, on the, the developers at the moment, we are working hard and currently are in the final stages of um, a major upgrade to the data service. So what I'm actually showing you here today in the demo is kind of a sneak preview of, um, of that completed service. So this is our um, staging area. Um, and as such, uh, the, we have for fewer data sets in here. So this is our kind of backstage area. And the data sets that we use in, in this instance of the site of the platform is for model development, um, working with pilots, um, working with champions, which is something that we'll discuss a bit later on. Um, but suffice to say, we do have around 800 data sets on our production platform. Um, and Brian will be talking about that a little bit later. So this will be rolled out very, very soon. This is work in progress. Um, and I think serves to highlight the fact that Daphne is live development. So what we're producing um, is we're currently working and responding to um, the community needs. And so any feedback here and as you hopefully join us and become more involved in Daphne um, is very, very important for our development. So on the page here, we have um, the data sets that we have produced here on the staging area. We can reorder them. Reorder them. Um, and this page is the hub of the data service and it's really about supporting users in um, identifying data which is useful to their research, um, which they would like to work with. Um, and there are ways then that they can take that on and continue to work with it on the platform, which Tom will come to. We can have a search bar up here where we can, for example, search for any outputs from a model. And if we scroll down, we see the search is updated. Uh, we have quite a lot of outputs of a 5G model as one of the pilots that we're developing on, Platinip, on Daphne. And I will click on that as an example of how we're displaying data sets. So a big part of the, uh, the update that we're currently going through is the, a migration from a Dublin Core metadata schema to a DCAT version 2 based metadata schema is much more comprehensive and much more extensible, interoperable. Um, and so the metadata that we're seeing up on here is all coming from that um, new schema that we have. We don't currently publish it as linked open data or linked data, um, but in the background, in, in the back end, then we are absolutely supporting that. It's just a question of um, making the links. So here we have some information about the, the model outputs. Um, this number is not great for a demo, but actually will come in useful later. Um, this is one of the things that we're changing. This is actually the ID number of the modeling service. So what this says is this data set was produced by the Daphne modeling service. Um, and here we have a brief description um, entered when the model was created, um, some information about the spatio-temporal extent of the data, and then the actual data sets towards the bottom, along with some additional metadata for completion and any keywords. Um, which are used for the search. To access the data, literally click on it in the way that you would click and download any data file in your browser. Coming in the future, we'll have the option of selecting multiple ones and downloading all together, potentially as a zip file. 
And then up here, we have a bit of information about how to use the data set on the platform. So Daphne isn't just about holding data, it's about using that data with models and building up those systems of systems. Um, and so we have uh, some information here, the Daphne ID is used for this data set throughout the whole platform. License information is provided here as an external link. Um, and at the moment where people are, as part of fair use policy, people are um, adhering to that uh, license themselves. And in time, we're looking at migrating towards um, more Daphne based management of licensing. And then at the top here, we have the permissions of the data set. So for each data set, it can be either open access where anyone with a login can see it, or it might be view only. Um, so the creator would have administrative permissions over it, but may choose that other people could only see the metadata for that data set, but they, and they wouldn't then have access to these files themselves. And that's a nice way of showing that you have this data, but maybe this, you know, asking users to come and talk to you a little bit more before you actually share that information with them. So, oh, and then the, there's a third access permission, which is that it's completely hidden to anyone else on the platform and it wouldn't even appear in this list. So on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of filters, which we can use to search through the data. Um, I said this number might come in handy. So this is the source. Um, this source here is the Daphne modeling service. So we can click on this and then we can see all of the data sets which have been produced by the Daphne modeling service on our staging platform. And we can refine the search, for example, if we know that we're looking for a PDF that was produced by a model a couple of days ago, then we can refine that search and home in on the PDF. We have a subject area at the moment, everything, as I said, this is our the kind of development area. So everything here is currently based on transportation. Um, there's also the option of um, clicking to see um, data which is full access only. So where you as a user would have access to the files. Without that selected, then you may see data sets which you, um, uh, where you would only see the metadata, but not the files themselves. And that might not be the kind of thing that you're interested in. And we can also do a temporal search on, um, so I'm just selecting last year. We can do a temporal search on data sets which cover um, the last year. So you can see we've got 42 data sets where the data there is covering that last year. So that's it for discovering data on the Daphne platform. Um, as I said, this con continuing development and your feedback is very welcome. Um, but this is also a community platform, so we strongly encourage you to add some data. And I am going to um, just take you through this process and hopefully demystify it a bit and um, hopefully give you a sense that you were able to get on board and, and have a go. Um, so when you're uploading a data, then we have two sections, a data entry section and a metadata section. The metadata section is comprehensive and is covering our DCAT um, schema, but not all fields are mandatory, so you don't necessarily have to do the whole thing. To upload a file, you either click here in the browser, or you can also drag and drop your file in. Um, and then they sit here in the holding area. Once you're happy with the files that you've uploaded here, you press click here to ensure files have been select, uh, have been added and that you're happy with the situation here and then upload. Once these files have been uploaded, they are set then for this particular instance. You can come back and change it afterwards um, and create a new version of the data with modified files. So if you do upload files and you get to this point and you've uploaded them and you realize that you've made a mistake, then pursue the metadata, get that completed first, and then come back and change it afterwards as would be my advice. So let's put in some, let's start with this and I'll go through. Okay, I will just go through and enter these fields. So I Identifiers here are, for example, a DOI for the data set. This isn't a mandatory field, but it allows you to link your data to the outside world um, and its existence in the outside world. Um, subjects here are taken from the Inspire top categories um, uh, here, and you can find out more about them. Um, let's select Biota. And then we have a, another list of themes, again, for, taken from Inspire themes at the moment, which we can select. So I'll just choose a couple at random. Um, just to say also that with Champions work, we're, um, at the moment these come from Inspire um, vocabularies, but 
updating these to become Daphne specific and infrastructure research specific is an ongoing piece of work um, that's starting up with the champions. So the language for your data and some keywords. If you wish to, you could add in a standard. So this is if your data conforms to a particular standard and you wish to make that known, then you can put in text for the standard and a, a URL. Then we add spatial and temporal coverage. Now, it's worth saying here that we are asking uh, uploaders to self-declare the spatial temporal coverage of their data. And part of the reason for this is we're not mandating what type of data people are uploading. So you can upload a zip file, you can upload a shape file, you can upload JSON uh, or PDF, in fact. And so uh, we're asking people to self-declare the spatial temporal coverage of that data. So we are based at FTSC in Didcot, not Didcot Australia, but Didcot UK. And here we're using the geo names um, register of uh, locations. So we're linking into that um, uh, vocabulary there. And then let's say that our data test data covers the previous month. Penultimately, then we have some information about uh, the creator of the data set outside of the platform. Um, again, so you can link in just use these and I will use my name here. Um, I don't have an ORCID ID so I'm not going to fill this, this uh, complete this section. This uh, field is then searched on later on. We say when the date was created and at the moment we're adding an update frequency which won't be mandatory I think on the final platform. There's an opportunity here to say which um, whether you have any intermediary publishers so for this is for sites like UK Gov or the European Open Data Portal to say that your data is being held there as well so just to complete the traceability and make it clear where your um, you know the history of your data and then finally we have a contact point here um, this is uh, sort of the, the almost the help desk for your data is is uh, the standard here so a, a, a name and a an accessible current address where a user can come and get in touch about uh, any problems that or questions that they have around your data and then we do mandate that you provide a license with your data if you don't have any other preferences then we give you a kind of default option of a creative commons um, open license but you can change that there for example and uh, put a little information about rights here and then finally at the bottom uh, if anyone's familiar with github um, then you we need a sort of commit message or a change log which just describes this uploading of the data and it there, it's there to facilitate our versioning, um, which is coming online. So as then you would come back and make a change, you then just leave a record to say what that change is. And that change, that record is then transparent to people who come to see your data later on. So they may be interested to know why um, they should be using the latest version of the data set and what's changed in comparison to the earlier versions. So I'm going to put initial message. And finally, have a look at the terms and conditions. Make sure you do agree with them close accept and then we publish and then we can see the data set at the top here i yes and also i think just to you may remember this previously only had one uh, option here transportation and now we have biota from this data set that i've just uploaded so these these fields are kind of dynamically sourced from the data set itself um, which is quite a nice feature and finally, I did say that if you made a mistake, you could go back and change it. And you would do that at this edit button here if you have administrative access. So you can come back, you see the files you've uploaded, you could re-upload. Uh, you would need to re-upload the entire file base rather than just the differences. And you can also change um, the, any of the text here or select other fields, etc. And then down at the bottom, you have some additional options as well, which is to delete. So you can either delete this particular version of the data set, and at this point we only have one, but if I were to save this, I would create a new one, or you can delete the entire data set. So that's all of the versions of this data set. So that I think completes whistle stop tour of the data service. And I'll hand over to Tom who can tell you more about what you do with this data once it's on the Daphne platform.